Hi, and welcome to our series on the Q programming language. I'm Jeffrey Bohr, and we're going to show you how to use Q to solve real-world problems and remarkably little code. In fact, I like to think of Q as serious computation and a single line of code. The Q programming language was developed by Arthur Whitney of KX. Q is unlike any other language you may have used in the past. It's very powerful and very concise. In fact, I think it's safe to say that Arthur Whitney has created the ultimate minimalist programming language. Not a single byte of code or data is wasted in the pursuit of ultimate efficiency. This presentation will roughly follow the chapter titled Q Shock and Awe in the book Q for Mortals, which is available for reading on the site code.kx.com. Even better, if you would like to follow along as we make the presentation at your keyboard, you can download the full non-commercial version of Q, also from kx.com. And this presentation will make three assumptions. First, you're here to learn how to write proper and efficient Q. Second, you can forget what you know about programming in traditional languages. And third, you're willing to learn new ways of doing things. As to the first, well, you're here, so I assume you want to learn how to do proper Q. Second, traditional programming. Let me tell you the things that you won't find in Q. You won't find control flow, loops, if-then-else blocks. You won't find objects or inheritance. You won't find threads. And you won't find shared mutable globals. These are the things that you must forget if you're going to write proper Q. If you don't, then I can only remind you of the traditional American saying, never rustle with a pig. You'll both get dirty, but the pig likes it. So I've told you what Q is not. Let's talk about what Q is. First, it's an interpreted language. Well, all right, that's nothing unusual. Python, a lot of other languages are interpreted. That's all the fashion these days. Second, Q is dynamically typed. Also not particularly odd, because Python and other languages are also dynamically typed. Next, Q is vector programming. Oops, what's that? Are you thinking back to linear algebra with vectors and matrices in college? Well, no, it's not that. We'll find out what that means shortly. Fourth, Q is functional programming. Oh, boy, what is that? That is something we'll talk about a few sections from now. But it basically means that we're modeling programming on functions in mathematics. Q is also based on data structures of lists and dictionaries. That's it. Nothing else. There are other data structures, but they're composed from lists and dictionaries. Tables in Q, which are composed from dictionaries, are in fact first class items. Q is the only language I'm aware of in which this is the case. And finally, IO in Q is dead simple. Funky notation, but dead simple. So this is what Q is. We'll investigate each one of these in more detail in the following sections.